GitHub is one of the most useful tools for any developer, including those who develop on Roblox. GitHub allows us to easily back up a Roblox project, including scripts and other objects, to the cloud. We can easily create version-based backups of our game each time we make any significant change. And these changes are all clearly outlined to us and easily reversible. GitHub also allows for multiple people to work on the same project and make changes to the code without interrupting others. GitHub tracks every change made by each user and can easily merge everyone's changes together without overriding or breaking someone else's code. Currently, I'm on GitHub and I'm showing you one of the projects that I've worked on in the past year. Inside of here, we have a source folder, and inside of that folder, we have a couple of other folders, and if we click on server folder, this is everything that's stored inside of my server script service, and I can easily access and look at every single file. Now, if I wanted to see all the changes that were made to one specific script, all I have to do is go to that script and then click on history. When I look at the history, I can see this has been modified multiple times on April 7th, then again on April 11th, and on April 13th as well. Now, if we wanted to, we could easily view each of the changes made every single time this file was updated by just clicking on the commit details right here. Now I click on this, I can see all the different changes that I've made to my repository, aka my project. And if we look on the sidebar right here, we can look for the tapper.server.lua script, which is the one that we were just looking at. We can click on that and we can see the direct changes that we made when we updated the file this specific time. And we could do that for every single time this file was updated, even including all the way back till April 7th, the first time that we created this file. And we can see right here, this is what the file looked like when we actually actually created it and pushed this to a repository for the first time. Now that's only showcasing a couple of the really cool features that GitHub offers, but it offers so much more than just those few things. Rather than continuing to tell you all the benefits and the cool things about GitHub, let's actually start getting you to use GitHub. So there will be a link down below in the description to the GitHub website. What you're going to want to do is sign up for a brand new account. Once you have a GitHub account created, you're then going to want to get the GitHub desktop app, which I'll leave a link down below in the description to as well. Once you have the GitHub desktop app installed, you're going to want to make sure that you're signed into your GitHub account. Additionally, we're going to be using VS Code and Rojo, which is going to allow us to use Visual Studio Code and copy all of our changes directly into Roblox Studio. I have a video on how to use Rojo and set up Visual Studio Code. If you guys haven't watched that already, there's an annotation at the top right hand corner of the screen and you guys can go and check that out. Now inside of the GitHub desktop app, you're going to want to click File at the top left and click on Options. And under Integrations, you're going to want to set the external editor to Visual Studio Code and make sure that you have that installed. Once you're done that, go ahead and click Save. And now we'll create our first project, which on GitHub, GitHub, projects are referred to as repositories, and people usually use the word repo, which is short for repository. So once again, using the GitHub desktop app, we're going to go to File, click on New Repository, and now we have to come up with a name for a repository. And since this is an example, we're just going to say Example Repo. And now if you include spaces in the name, it replaces the spaces with dashes. The description doesn't exactly matter. Neither does the Git Ignore or License, but the local path does. The local path represents a folder that the repo is going to be stored inside on your local computer. So you can click Choose and then you can choose any folder you want. I actually have a folder called GitHub inside of my documents, and that's where I keep all of my repos at. But since this is an example, I'm just making one randomly in a folder on my desktop. Once you've found the folder, go ahead and click on Select Folder, and then you can go ahead and click on Create Repository. Okay, so now we've just created our first repository. Let's go ahead and make sure that we publish the repository as well. This little checkbox is checked by default so that your repository is private and nobody else can access it. If you uncheck that, then anybody in the world can see your repository and see all of your code. Once you decide if you want it to be private or not, just go ahead and click on publish repository. And I already created one called example repo. So I'm just going to name mine example repo two, and then click publish repository. Once you've done that, you should be able to go to the GitHub website, click on your repositories, and then you can see all of your repositories right here. And we can see the newest one that I just created, which is called example repo dash two. And that was updated 17 seconds ago. So we can go inside of that. And now inside of this repository, all we have is a file named dot git attributes. And now if we look in the folder where we save the repository to, we can see that we have the git attributes file and we also have a little hidden folder here named dot git which we'll never actually go into or modify ourselves so you don't have to worry about that so now that we have a repository set up we can actually start adding files making changes and doing things like that so we're going to go ahead and open up visual studio code then we want to open that specific repository folder in visual studio code so we're going to go to file click on open folder then find wherever the repository is stored on your computer and click select folder and that will open that folder up directly in visual studio code now let's use rojo to initialize a basic Roblox project. We're going to go up to view, click on command palette, and now we have Rojo right here. So let's open the menu. 
and now let's click install Rojo now. That will add Rojo to our project. And then Rojo says that this workspace contains no project files. Let's just say create a new one and that'll create the basic little setup for us. Now inside of the file explorer in Visual Studio Code, we can see there's a couple of things that have been added to our project. And you can confirm this by opening up the folder in the file explorer as well. All of these files and all these folders have just been added directly to the repository folder. Now when something is highlighted in green in Visual Studio Code, that usually means that it's just been added to this project and it's brand new. For example, we can see the .git attributes file appears in white because that's already existed inside of a repository. Additionally, if we open up the GitHub desktop app, we can also see that there's a couple of changes made inside of here as well. So we can see that there's been seven changed files and this green plus icon means that these are brand new files that have been created inside of our repository. So we can see all four of these files have been added directly inside of here. And then if we look inside of the source folder and inside of each of these individual folders, we can also see that there have been new files made as well, which are our Lua scripts. And we can see those inside of the changes as well. Now, whenever you've made a decent amount of changes to your repository, you usually want to push those changes to the repository so everybody else who has access to your GitHub repository can also view those changes as well. Sending your changes to GitHub is incredibly easy, especially using the GitHub app or Visual Studio Code. In order to send these changes to GitHub using the GitHub app, all we have to do is look a little bit below where our changes have been displayed, and it allows us to put a summary so we can describe all the changes that we've made. And if we want to include more details, we can also put that in the description as well. Now, usually when you've just created a brand new project, the message that we want to include with all of our changes is usually something like initialized project. And the description doesn't really matter, but let's say you're developing a pet hatching system in your game and you've just created those changes. Usually you're going to want to include that information in the description so that other people or even yourself can come back, look at that change and understand what you were working on at that time. So once you've included the summary, you can go ahead and click on commit to main. Now, once we've done that, we see a little button that pops up that says push to origin. And also if you look inside of Visual Studio Code, every single thing in here now appears as white instead of appearing as green. That's because all the changes that we just made are basically the previous version that we're working on. So all these files are no longer new because we just committed those changes. Now, if we look on the GitHub website and we refresh the page and look at our repo, we can actually see the last change was made nine minutes ago and the changes haven't actually been sent to GitHub yet. The reason for that is because all we did was commit the changes. Committing the changes are basically marking your changes as ready to be sent to GitHub. The final thing that you need to do after committing is push them to GitHub. So we can see the little button right here that says push origin or even up here. And by clicking on that, that will then send those changes that we have committed or marked for ready to be sent directly to GitHub. So now when we look on the website and refresh the page, we can now see two minutes ago was the last change because that's when I committed them. And now we can also see all the files and folders and everything else like that, that we've made in the last change. Let's go inside of Visual Studio Code and delete one of the files. It doesn't really matter. It's just to show you for an example. So we're going to delete the init.server.lua file. And then we're going to add a new file inside of here called test.server.lua. And it's just going to have a print statement inside of it printing out true. Now we can look in the GitHub desktop app and we can see there's actually now a red minus because we deleted this specific file. And now there's also a green plus because we added a brand new file as well. We can also modify an existing file, just add a couple of letters into here. And we can now see that this appears as yellow because it has been modified. Now, like I said, you can also use Visual Studio Code for committing and pushing changes to your GitHub repository. You don't only need to use the GitHub desktop app. So to do this in Visual Studio Code, you have a little section right here that says source control. If we click on that, we can see something similar to what is appearing inside of our GitHub desktop app. So right here, we have the changes. We can see there's a little strike through right here and there's a red D because we deleted that file. There's a green U right here because this file is currently untracked since we've just created that file. And now there's also a yellow M right here because we've modified this file or updated it or changed it in some way. So now if we want to commit those changes, all we have to do is enter in our little summary or a little message of what changes we've made. I'm just going to say test because it's just an example. And now we have two options. We can either commit or if we click on this arrow here, we can commit and then push. Usually I'll just commit and then I'll come back later and I'll push. But if you click on this sync changes button that appears after you commit the changes, this will then push those changes directly to GitHub. So we can go ahead and click on that. And now we can see that it's processing. And once it's done processing, we can go to the GitHub website, look at our repo, and we can see we've just committed changes 19 seconds ago. And if we wanted to, we could see all the changes that are included inside of that specific change as well. So we deleted a file, we added a file, and then we've also modified this file as well. Hopefully you now understand the basics of GitHub and how to create your own repository and start making changes to it. I really want more developers on Roblox to begin using GitHub because one, it's industry standard, but also because it makes sharing code so much easier. For example, I have a public repo on GitHub, which is called OTS camera dash Roblox. Now this 
stands for over the shoulder camera and basically it's just two scripts that anybody can easily access and throw into their own game to modify the camera to be directly over a player's shoulder now why is this really nice to have in a github repo rather than just being on a roblox website well that's because viewing my code is two clicks away you can literally click on this folder and then view both of the files which contain all of the code for making this possible anytime i see somebody post a module to the forums or anything like that i always want to see what their code looks like and what they're doing to achieve this the thing is that if they don't upload their code to github it makes it really hard to see and i'll have to actually download their scripts open the file and look through it that way but if you have it on github you can just go to the website and quickly and easily browse all the code not only that but we can actually see there's something right here that says two contributors we can obviously see this is me but this is another person who's also committed to my repository as well and if we click right here we can see the commit that they actually published to my repository which says fix character alignment remaining after disabled and we can see all the changes they actually made and i had to approve these changes and then accept them to my github repository but because of github other people are easily able to contribute to my code so it's nice to publish scripts like this to github because if other people want to use them they're free to use them and then if they find bugs or other issues along the way they could also come back to this repository fix those bugs and then help everybody else out and themselves as well so github is a really useful tool with all that being said hopefully you guys will now begin using github for your future projects as always if you guys did enjoy the video or it did help you guys out make sure you smash the like button also the subscribe button and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when i upload more roblox development content additionally i have a patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to a ton of the scripts that i've made in my previous videos there's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out with that being said i'll see you guys in the next video